Hello, you're listening to Count Richard von Kudenhof Kalergi. Today is Monday, the 29th of July, and here's a couple of comments since last Sunday's video. In Italy, the NGO SOS Mediterranean and Maison Sans Frontier have started operations off the coast of Libya with the launch of its new vessel, Ocean Viking, seven months after it was forced to stop using its ship, the Aquarius, a ship that was costing €400,000 a month to hire. After nearly three years of operations, this one ship picked over 30,000 migrants. Ocean Viking is a Norwegian registered vessel, will have a crew of nine and will have a rescue team and medical team and is an offshore supply vessel and is 70 metres long and 15 metres wide with a weight of 210 tonnes. And still in Italy, prosecutors have requested an indictment against the NGO Open Arms charging two senior members with aiding illegal immigration. The Spanish-run NGO had its vessel detained by the Italian authorities last year. As of today, the Ocean Viking is, all, is 100 miles off the coast of Barcelona. The Italian Interior Minister Matteo Salvini has declared that his country will no longer take in all migrants arriving in Europe in a letter to the French interior minister saying, quote, France and Germany cannot decide on migration policies by ignoring the demands of the most exposed countries like us and Malta. The letter was sent before the meeting of the interior and justice ministers now uh, last, last Monday in Paris, with Macron announcing that, quote, the conclusion of this morning's meeting is that 14 member states agree to a new solidarity mechanism to allow new migrants be sent to various member states. Salvini was not present at the meeting and has previously stated the importance of securing the external EU borders to prevent mass migration of illegals. And in between these two meetings, the previous Friday and last Monday, Charlie Flanagan has done a somersault and signed on behalf of Ireland. In Germany, there are plans to no longer serve pork or gelatine contained products like gummy bears at two daycare centres in Leipzig, promoting a wave of online criticism. The daycare centre proposal to make changes because of two Muslim children, quote, out of respect for a changing world, only pork free meals and snacks will now be served. Even the head of Saxony branch of Merkel CDU said this was unacceptable and an ADF parliamentarian described it as cultural subjugation. And still in Germany last Sunday morning, a 28 year old Kosovo Albanian pushed a 34 year old mother of a 13 year old girl in front of a moving train in North Rhineland. The woman was run over and died on the spot. Eyewitnesses detained the man until police arrived. Magistrates have issued an arrest warrant for murder, citing the man's desire and lust for murder with malice. They were not known to each other, and her husband later wrote on his Facebook page, quote, My wife was murdered today. She was pushed in front of a train by a stranger for no reason. The perpetrator was already known to the police for acts of violence and burglary. This is similar to an event which took place in January 2016 when a 28-year-old Iranian migrant pushed a 20-year-old woman in front of a moving train in Berlin where she died of her injuries. The man was detained by witnesses and he had a history of violence including stabbing a man when he was 14 years old and was charged with causing bodily harm. He had also been charged with previous, previous uh, drug offences. And news just in today in Frankfurt an eight-year-old boy has been killed after being pushed in front of a moving train by a 40-year-old man from, er of, from Eritrea who was arrested at the scene. The children's mother survived the attack by rolling between the tracks and German authorities have now advised people to keep a two-metre uh, distance from the platform uh, while waiting on trains. And in July earlier this year, the town of Kell, which is on the German-French border, a swimming pool had to be shut down early after a group of between 50, up to 50 French-speaking North African youths caused havoc with other bathers. With police being called after instructions from staff were ignored and became very aggressive towards both police and staff, 
Similar experiences have also happened in France with one pool in Paris on the 1st of July being evacuated with over a thousand people having to leave after a gang of youths aged between 13 and 15 number between 20 and 25 started attacking other youths resulting in some serious injuries injuries and the North African gang began urinating and defecating in the pool before police were arrived. And in Switzerland, according to the president of the Lifeguards Association, staff are routinely threatened and abused by migrant, youth, migrant background youths, particularly female lifeguards, and don't take well to women giving them instructions. With the vice president of the Lifeguards Association saying that she had been the victim of attacks herself, including threats and spat at, with problems with children as young as 10 years old. So are swimming pools now going to be turned into new go zone, no-go zones? And now for some domestic issues. An article in the Irish Times on Monday regarding the Malawian, Malawian spoofer has, that who has been granted to leave in Ireland uh, with the stamp on her Malawian passport. Her two 19-year-old twins have also been granted international protection. She said that, quote, Ireland is her home and I am proud to be a true Irish woman and she's going to help make Ireland great again. What garbage. It turned out that she only got 312 votes for the Social Democrats during the last election. She also appeared on the Ray Darcy radio show where she said that she was finally home and she still refused to answer any questions on how and when she got here. Also on the Muhammad Duffy show last week, one of the shows is about the difficulties that returning Irish went through when they returned to the country of the birth with problems related to car insurance, housing and transferring of driver's license from one country to another. So I rang the programme and asked to go on and I told the researcher that there's 20,000 NGOs operating in Ireland, 10,000 of them getting funding um, from the state and that we have already 89 organization seeing with racism in this country so surely we can find one NGO to help deal with dealing with returning Irish and she said okay thanks very much and I hung up the phone and coincidentally I was talking to a chap over the weekend who spent six years live an Irishman who spent six years uh, living in Canada and wanted to return home and he spoke about the same problems with the car insurance, trying to find accommodation and driver's licenses. Uh, interestingly, he said that one of the things he noticed when he arrived back in Ireland was the change in the demographics of this country within that six year period. And interesting enough, he had a degree in economic history uh, with, with European history and economics and had never heard of Count Richard von Kudenhof Clergy. So I told him about uh, about him. And I find it quite interesting that for a man who played such an important role in the setting up of the EU and the pan-European movement, that a man like this had never came across him during his studies on European history and politics. And he also told me an interesting story regarding a friend of, a friend of his in Canada, a Chinese man, who said that there were too many Chinese in Canada and when he was asked what did he mean by that he said that when people arrive in such numbers that instead of actually integrating that they find themselves uh, speaking to people of similar backgrounds and languages so they don't necessarily integrate as well as they should and uh, i also attended the protests outside google on monday evening and i have to say there was an almost carnival like atmosphere and I met up with Aidan, Julie, Silver Fox and others that had been there, that I'd seen there before, with one chap playing the tin whistle. And Gemma announced that she will be setting up a news channel sometime in the autumn. I also met one of my subscribers, Kieran, who came over to say hello. It was nice to see so many tricolours fluttering in the breeze. And it was an opportunity to hand out ACI leaflets, including some to Google staff as they left the building and in most circumstances were politely accepted and well received. I was there again on Friday, but couldn't attend until after 7pm, but missed the fun and games of earlier with the arrival of Panty Bliss, Fiona O'Leary, and Gran Torino's harasser from Ruski, another LGBTI activist, arriving with their megaphones and flags on rainbow-coloured bus. 
The Muppet Show lasted for about an hour before being picked up by the same bus to bring them back to wherever they came from. I met a very nice, nice lady called Claire who knew the Irish Patriot and we spoke for a while. While there, I asked Gemma would she mind if I said a few words the next time I was down and she said not at all. I was inspired by the very nice speech Julie had made on Monday. So I arrived back on Saturday and was greeted with the sounds of barons and voices cheering and clapping as I made my way down Barrow Street the sound echoing as I walked underneath the railway bridge to see the beautiful sight of Irish flags fluttering in the breeze. I'd only just started filming a couple of minutes when Gemma spotted me and called me over. I stood beside Justin Barrett who gave an excellent speech which I missed but was recorded by Kilmore Key whom I met later on and had a chat with. I unfurled my notes and did battle with the breeze. I've never spoken publicly before, but I'm glad that I did, and I hope other people who come to this event will be inspired and do the same and speak from their heart. Uh, I met up with Julie, Jenny, John, Kieran, Silver Fox, and Brian, who is now a subscriber, and another gentleman called Brian, who was in the RAF during the 1960s. So we had a great chat about aircraft. I also met a chap who I had spoken to before outside the Twitter protest. And I came across people who came up from different parts of the country, including a group that came up from Cavan, another chap who came up from Atlone by train. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you value your free speech, please attend these demonstrations. And if you have a free travel pass, why not attend? It's very convenient to get to as it's right beside Barrow Street Dart Station. If you're, you could always make a day of it while you're up in Dublin. And wouldn't that be something nice to tell your grandchildren that you took part in the battle for Barrow Street? I noticed that I have a couple of new subscribers this week, so thanks very much for joining. Welcome aboard. I look forward to reading your comments. And I'd like to say a special hello to Shawnee. So there are a couple of thoughts which are my own. Thanks for listening. Good afternoon and good luck.